In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to achieve sort of this rough pencil sketch effect. I like it because it also adds a nice dramatic effect and it'll make your photo really pop. I also want to thank you for the positive feedback on my last tutorial. I know that I upload very rarely and a lot of it is because I don't really know what to upload. So if you want, you can leave some suggestions in the comment section. That would be greatly appreciated. Now, there are some things I think you should know before you start. Firstly, I would say that this tutorial has an intermediate to advanced difficulty level. The concept is fairly simple to understand and the instructions should be easy to follow, but some of the steps in the process might be a little tricky. Secondly, this effect looks best on photographs of people and or animals, preferably full body photographs. It is possible to apply this effect on landscape photographs and so on, but the process might be a little different. And lastly, it never hurts to add your own twist. Play around with some of the settings and see what you can do to create your own personal touch. Now let's get started. The first step is to find a photo. Again, it looks best with full body photographs, which is what I will use, but it can also be used in other things as well. I googled hip hop dancer and this was actually the first result I got. I don't own the photo or anything, but I'm only using it for educational purposes. The second step is to create three sketch brushes. We're going to create three different brushes to create a texture that will make it look like the photo has been sketched. The reason why we're creating three brushes is because if we only create one brush, the texture will become sort of repetitive and it would be a pattern and not a texture. But if we have three brushes, we can combine them to make the texture more random and therefore more natural. Let's create a new document. Make it 1000 by 1000 pixels and set the background color to white. Then unlock the background layer and select your brush tool. We're going to use one of the default brushes. If you go to the cogwheel icon, you will see a list of available brushes. Pick thick heavy brushes and add it to your list. Then choose one of the narrow ones. I'll be using the second one and then decrease the size to around 10 to 15 pixels. Make sure to set your foreground color to black. Now start painting some random lines. These are supposed to represent the rough pencil strokes that make up the texture. This is easier to do with a tablet, but you can also make it with a mouse or a trackpad, which is what I'm using. Make sure to draw them with quick movements in order to make them more smooth and more natural. Also, try not to go over the lines of the document. But other than that, don't spend too much time on this step, and don't try to replicate the lines I'm doing. They're supposed to be random. Just make sure that you have around 5 to 8 lines. Once you've got something like this, go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and add it to your brushes. This will be our first brush. The other two brushes are created the exact same way. You can do them in the same document, just create a new layer, fill it with white, create some random black lines with your brush tool, and then add it to your brushes, just like we did now. But just make sure that you draw the lines differently each time. When you have completed this step, you should have three new brushes in your list of brushes. The third step of this process is to create the actual effect. So first of all, open up the photograph in Photoshop if you haven't already. We're going to create the effect by painting with our new brushes and then masking our photograph to that layer. Right now I'm showing you a very sped up recording of what the process will look like and then I'll go through everything step by step. Alright, now let's do it. The effect is better if the photograph has a white background. This will add some nice contrasts that would be otherwise lost. If your photo already has a white background, you don't have to worry about this, but if it doesn't, you're going to have to select the background and make it white. I don't want this tutorial to be about how to make a perfect selection, mainly in this case because the selection doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll just go over this step quickly. 
I normally use the quick selection tool to create a rough selection. Then I use the lasso tool to make adjustments. Remember that you can hold the shift key to add to your selection and hold the alt key to remove from your selection. Your selection does not have to be perfect so don't spend too much time with it. If you want to improve it, you can go to Refine Edge and make some adjustments. When you have selected the background of the photo, create a new layer and place it above the photo. Go to Edit, Fill and then choose White. Again, this is going to add some nice contrast that will become apparent later. The reason why we're adding the white overlay on a new layer is because it's generally good practice not to make permanent changes on the photos you use in your projects. Now let's start painting with our new brushes. We're going to do this on a new and fresh layer, so go ahead and create a new layer and make sure that it is at the very top in the layers panel. To make it easier to see what you're doing, decrease the opacity of the photo to around 10%. Since we decrease the opacity, you can now see these little squares that sort of mark the transparency. They can be a little annoying, so what you can do is you can create a new layer at the bottom of your document and fill it with a solid white color. Before we start painting, we're going to have to modify the brush a little bit. Select one of the brushes that you created and then go to Window and Brush. First of all, we're going to have to increase the spacing, which will make it less cluttered. Then we're going to decrease the size. I'm going to decrease the size to around 300 pixels, but you may have to use a different size depending on the size of your photo. So just try to make sure that the size is similar to mine in relation to my photo, so similar proportions. Then go to Shape Dynamics. We're going to add some size jitter, angle jitter and roundness jitter. Leave them all at around 50 to 80 percent. The brush will now vary in size, angle and shape. Now we're going to start painting on the new layer that we just created at the top of the document. You could do the painting on a layer mask but then it can be sort of hard to see what you're doing which is why we're going to do it this way. You have to decide what part of the object you want visible. It looks really cool if you have some parts more visible than others. If you look at the example, you can see that the torso and the upper body in general is very visible but the legs are not. This means that we're going to paint more in this upper body area. It also looks better if you paint more in the middle and less on the edges of the person. This will make the contour of the dancer more diffused and it will sort of blend him into the background. Every now and then you want to switch to a different brush. We want this to look nice and natural, and that won't happen if the brush strokes are constantly repeating. You also want to make sure that you use the same settings for every brush. The settings might reset when you switch. So again, open up the brush window, and then increase the spacing, decrease the size, and add some size jitter, angle jitter, and roundness jitter. Then continue painting like you did before. Also you want to make sure that all of the brush strokes are connected. In other words, you don't want to have isolated areas of paint scattered across the document. You want to keep it concentrated. Once you're done, your image should look similar to this. As you can see, the dancer is not fully covered. I've added a lot more in the torso area, but the rest of his body is not as covered. If you're happy with what you have, place this layer below the photo layer. Then bring the opacity of the photograph all the way up to 100% again. Now we're going to mask the photograph to the layer that we just painted. In order to do that, just hold the Alt key and click somewhere between the layers in the layers panel. Then if you added a white overlay to cover the background, mask that layer as well. Now it should look similar to this. If we zoom in, 
you can see that we can clearly see the edges of the dancer in some areas, which does not look too good. We want the effect to look sort of disorganized, which means that the brush strokes should go over the edges. We want the edges to be more diffuse. So what you want to do is to grab a soft brush. If you don't have one in your list, just load the basic brushes by going to the cogwheel icon and clicking on basic brushes. Make the size a little smaller than what we used earlier, so it's 250 to 300 pixels for me. Then you want to create a new layer, we'll call this layer edges. Make sure that you place it at the top. Then unmask the photo layer from the sketch layer by alt clicking between the photo layer and the sketch layer. This is just temporary, we're going to reapply the mask later. Now in order to extend the edges of the dancer, we're going to paint close to the edge of the dancer with the same color as the dancer. Again, make sure that you do this on a layer placed on the top of the other layers. In order to sample a color from the dancer, just make sure that you have the brush tool selected and then hold the ALT key and click on the dancer to sample that color. Since the color of the dancer's shirt is green, we're going to sample a green color from his shirt. Then we're going to start painting around the edge like this. When we get to his arm, we want to sample a color from his arm instead and then continue to paint. I would not do this around the entire dancer. There are some edges I want to keep, like the hands, the shoes and the face. These parts of the dancer are important, so I want to keep them as they are. Make sure that you sample a color that corresponds to the color of that part of the dancer. Your end result should look something like this. Once you're done, you can reapply the mask. Just hold ALT and click between the photo layer and the sketch layer. You also want to mask the white overlay and the layer that we just made. Now it should look a lot better. If you see anything that you don't like, such as a brush stroke that is out of place, you can just erase that part of the sketch layer. If there are any areas that you want to fill in a little more, just add some paint in the sketch layer with the brush that we just created before. If you want, you can leave it as it is. What I like to do is to add a levels adjustment and increase the contrast a little bit to make it really pop. I would also recommend applying a black and white filter. What's really cool about this effect is that it also looks great with a black or a grey background. So if you want, you can add a black or a grey color overlay to the background layer. Play around with the settings and see what works best for you. That's all I had for you today. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment. I will try to reply to every question. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any tutorial ideas, let me know. Thanks for watching.